Welcome to the Block Party. My name is Seth Kushner. Today we are joined by rookie sensation Ross Colton. What's going on, Ross? Not much. Just enjoying my off day today. Now, since February 15th, when you got called up or right around there, it's been a whirlwind. And you just told me you're at a hotel, which I was going to ask you where you're living. Tell me about how you found out you made the team and, and what it's been like up until now. Uh, yeah, so it was actually a you know, Saturday game in Syracuse. And then right after the game, uh, Stacey Rose called me and kind of just said, you know, we're calling you up. So I was super excited for that. And then actually uh, they, you know, flew us private plane down here, which was kind of me and Alex Barabale, which was kind of unbelievable. I'm not going to lie. That experience was that was something else. And then pulled right in and uh, kind of just since then, just, you know, kind of just try and take it day by day. I don't like to look too much into, you know, how long I'm staying or, you know, what the expectations are. I kind of just come to the rink every day, try and get better and learn from, you know, these guys because, you know, they're the best in the world and they're the best at what they do. So kind of just whatever I can and uh, to help the team win is kind of just how I'm trying to attack each day, I think. Was that your first time on a private jet? It was, yeah, it was. It was pretty, it was something I'll remember forever. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> okay. Cause I, I've not, I still, I I'll never be on one. I haven't been on one yet. Well, I've just seen them with the celebrities on Instagram. Like what, tell me about a private jet, like something that just blew your mind about it other than the fact that it's private. <laughs> so like I, when they told us, I, w- I really honestly didn't know what to expect. And then, you know, me and BB hop on that thing. And, and I'm thinking like, you know, I've only been on normal planes. It was like a six seater. It was like us and the pilot. And like, let me tell you, you feel like every bump, that's the only thing that I, so it's, it's cool. Cause it looks cool, but at the same time, like you feel everything. So on the, when we were like on coming down, I was like, are we going down here? Like, you know, you feel everything you're shaking. My hands are sweat. And I was like, this is cool. But you know, I'd rather big planes. Nice. Cause you don't feel all the, uh, you don't feel all the turbulence. That's incredible. So <laughs> you are, you're living at a hotel right now. Yes. So what, what's that? It was that the plan all along, or I didn't know if like any of the, your teammates have offered for you to stay at their house, or if you're just not sure how long you're going to be in town for, I think it's going to be a while, but what's your plan right now? Yeah. So I think it's just that like when I originally got called up, I'm just, it's kind of, you know, not sure how long I was going to be here or whatnot. So honestly, it's, it's not the worst thing in the world because, you know, just, you know, I get my bed made like every day. I don't have like, kind of just draw a bed zone. I come home, my room's clean. Like it's all nice, but, uh, that's the, that's the only positive to it, but you know, it could be worse. And, you know, I got the nice view of the water. So uh, I honestly don't mind it too much. Ross, the people on Twitter, they want to know what to call you. They don't know if they call you like Rossi Colton, what the <laughs> name, like R O double dollar sign. Is there something that people can call you for short on Twitter from now on? Uh, I don't know. That's it. I got a bunch of nicknames. I think I just go by Ross or Colton or I don't, I don't even know. I don't, some guys in the locker room and call me the boss. So like, I don't, I don't know. So do they call you Ross, the Ross, the boss, or just the Ross, boss? The, Ross, the boss is kind of what that's been going around the locker room a little bit. So now listen, I'm extremely jealous of the group hugs that you get to have with Pat Maroon and Pat Maroon came out and said that you have a great personality and you're fun loving and that the guys have embraced you. What well, is that something that you try to be cognizant of coming into this established environment and this culture that you go, Hey, I'm just going to be myself. And you think that's why some of the guys are embracing you. Uh, yeah, for sure. You know, kind of when I first got here, you know, you're a new guy. I don't want to, you know, be overly outspoken or anything like that. So I was kind of quiet, but you know, my personality is kind of, I would think the opposite of that, you know, I'm pretty, pretty outgoing. I like to run my mouth a little bit, you know, chirp guys and stuff like that. So, uh, it's still, I still don't say much. I kind of just speak when spoken to, I think, you know, with uh, some guys, but at the same time, I think my personality is coming out a bit and, you know, I'm just kind of trying to have fun with it. And, you know, especially like you said before, Patty Maroon, like he's the best and, you know, you could have fun with him and he loves to have a good time. So he kind of, you know, lightens the mood and jokes around with me and that kind of just makes me feel a little bit better. Is there anybody on the team you've chirped and you, after you said, you go, oh man, I shouldn't have said that. I've gone too far. No, no, not yet. I'm, I'm too scared to do that, but uh, maybe I'll do that soon and then I'll see how it goes. But I don't think I'll be doing that anytime soon, honestly. <laughs> Ross, how good does it feel just as a rookie to go out there and playing with you? You probably play with anybody, but to have Pat Maroon out there on the ice with you, just to me, he's an artist on skates. He can do it all. And what's it like to have that guy out there knowing that he's got your back in any situation? Yeah, you said it perfectly. I just know that, you know, Patty's got my back. He's got everyone on the team's back and uh, kind of just makes you play like with a little bit more confidence, I think, because, you know, you can kind of do some stuff and maybe, you know, put yourself in some situations where, you know, if you do get hit or something happens, you know, Patty's right there to, you know, have your back and kind of just, I think I've said this before in like other interviews where it's just like, he's always, 
he's always in your ear and he's always talking to you and kind of just such a positive influence to me and even Joe, who's, you know, still young and he's kind of just always telling us, you know, stick with it, play your game and just stuff like that goes such a long way from coming from someone like Patty. So he's honestly, he's the man. And, you know, I really enjoy playing with him. Now, Ross, word on the street is when Coach Cooper picked you for the shootout a couple of weeks ago, you told Stammer and Point on your way out to the ice, watch how it's done, guys. Is that true? <laughs> that is not true. I did not say that. <laughs> what, what was your What was your thought when when Coach said, hey, go out there? Had he had, – he's seen you in a shootout before, right? Or at least in practice? Uh, no, I mean, yeah, maybe just in practice or whatnot. But it's so kind of uh, – when overtime ended, uh, the assistant coach, Jeff Halpern, like tapped me on the shoulder and was like, hey, are you good in shootouts? Uh, so I was kind of like in that situation, like, I, I'm like, not going to say no, obviously. So I was like, yeah, like I'm good, but like, I got, I got a few moves that I, uh, that I like to use. And, uh, so when he said that, you know, I was going to back my head. I was like, okay, maybe I'll go, you know, like maybe fourth or fifth after the original, like three shooters go, I was like, oh, that'll be, I'm going to see what happens. And then, you know, their guy scored and then I get a, you know, kick on the butt from Coop saying, and then I look back and I like, I honestly think I went like me, like, you want me to go? <laughs> so uh and then uh from that moment I just kind of had that the one move in the back of my head and kind of just honestly I was like let's I'm gonna roll with it and just be confident with it and you know stuck with what I know and you know when it are you nervous in that scenario are you are you trying not to think too much you just go out there and you're ready to do your move and that's it or are you like oh my god this is big I think like a before it happened I was a little nervous but then like once he you know tapped me on the butt you know kind of just got a say, you know, embrace the moment and kind of just go with it and kind of, like I said before, I kind of have a move in the back of my head that I know that I'm confident with that, you know, and usually works. And, you know, luckily it did that time, but, you know, you can't, I didn't want to overthink it too much. I kind of just wanted to go with it and just say, hey, you know, he, he trusts me enough to throw me out there. Let's be confident with it. I was going to ask, where do you have your your puck from your first ever goal? I, I can't imagine it's in the hotel. Do your parents have it or something? Or is it right there with you in the uh, extra bed? So, uh I think they're getting, I actually haven't gotten it back yet. They're putting it in like a frame or like a little uh, plaque or something like that. So I have my first game jersey actually still in my suitcase. I should probably do something with that. It's kind of folded, folded up in a Lululemon bag. I, mean, I feel like I should, I should not have that there. So I got to do, so I got to get that to my family when they come down. I'm not sure when they're going to be able to come down again. So next time they're in town, I got to give that to them for sure. Cause you know, I'm sure my mom's going to want to do something with that. Ross, how many times have you seen Bruce Springsteen live in concert? Uh, I saw him once at uh, MetLife Stadium, and that's actually funny you ask that because I'm, my dad and brother are, like, the biggest Boss fans. Like, they absolutely love him. And originally, you know, I wasn't, like, a huge fan, and then uh, they were like, go to see him live, and it'll change your life. And saw him live at MetLife. We had, like, the uh, – like, we were standing, like, I don't know, pit. I was like – right in the pay exactly and it was like unbelievable it was like honestly life-changing it was it was the best what what is i heard he plays for like four or five hours during those shows legit it honestly was like it was for it honestly had to have been four or five hours honestly what what, and like, what was it about he, he, he just like it's it was on i don't even know just like the energy he brings and it's not like you know you go see some people they're good for I don't know, maybe an hour or so but like the energy he brings from the many steps on stage until the last minute was just, it was awesome. How do Canadians feel about Bruce Springsteen? Are they a fan <laughs> of his? I don't, I don't know. You got to get maybe my buddy Taylor Radish, get him on here. See what, he, get what he, see what he thinks. I don't know if he'd have the same thing. He might not even know who he is, if I'm being <laughs> honest with you. <laughs> I was gonna say, how do you feel about the lot the the music that the guys pick in the locker room last year it was gravy train that ended up being a, a great uh song that Vazzy picked out um I've heard some of the younger guys trying not to speak up about the music are you a fan of it so actually it's kind of weird with like the, all the COVID protocols they actually have us like in the it's almost like the lounge area so we're not actually there's a couple of us like in the lounge so we're technically not even in the locker room and we don't even have a speaker in there so and so before the game, we're just yucking it up with each other. We're not even listening to music. So that's something different for me because, you know, usually before the game, I like to get a little, you know, fired up and listen to some good music. But, you know, we just have, I guess, good conversation before the game to get us fired up. <laughs> Whatever works, it's, it's working for you. Uh, you, you. Now, because you're having such a great start to your, your campaign and your career, um, do you ever – you do a lot of intermission interviews. Do you ever feel like I always get anxiety for you? I always feel like like Coach Cooper is going to start his intermission coaching report like during while you're still getting interviewed. What's the? Do you have to run back in there? Have they ever started without you, or do you know because you have the iPads on the bench pretty much what you have to do in the next period? Uh, a little bit of both. 
the, the only time that I've actually run into that issue was the uh, the other night when we played Chicago at home and I did like the uh, the post game interview uh, on the bench. And like when I put the headset on, they were like, OK, give us like three minutes. And then like five minutes went by and he goes, OK, another give us one more minute. Uh, and then like two minutes went by and then the interview, you know, last, I don't know, five minutes or whatnot. And then everyone was waiting for me when I came back in the locker room, like, like, oh, big shot. Like, what are you doing? Like, what did you do the interview? Like at the TV station? Like, so guys were, guys were chirping me for that. So, you know, I felt bad because I felt like I held up the guys a little bit and, you know, didn't want to do that, but, you know, I'm sure they've all been there before. So yeah, exactly. You got, you're doing interviews. You got stuff going on. <laughs> tell me, tell me something about, has there any been anybody that's kind of gone out of their way to embrace you since you've joined the team? Uh, yeah, I think, you know, most guys have all been, you know, very, you know, outgoing and, uh, kind of welcomed me in. And, uh, I think honestly the best two examples are, you know, Patty and Joe just one, because, you know, we're on line with them and, I played with Joe and uh, we were on the same line in Syracuse and, and then, you know, Patty just being a little bit of an older guy, you can tell he, he definitely cares and, you know, wants to see, you know, me succeed and just anything he says or, you know, anything he does and, you know, kind of just goes a long way with me. And, you know, I appreciate, you know, what he's done for me and all the little things that he says to me. And, but, you know, honestly, everyone's been, you know, awesome ever since I've got here. What were you doing last season while the team was in the bubble? Uh, I was back home in Jersey, you know, just quarantining, honestly doing a whole lot of nothing. That was not the most fun, but, you know, seeing them win was, uh, was pretty awesome. You know, wish I, wish I was a part of it, but you know, I'm just honestly so excited to be here right now. But when, uh, let's say the day before you got called up, were you thinking, you said you tried not to think too much about it, but was it something that was on your mind? Uh, yeah, no, it definitely was. And. Uh, you know, coming out of camp, I thought I had a pretty good shot at making the team. And then, you know, when I got sent down, just, you know, it was definitely frustrated because, uh, you know, the, like all summer, you know, worked hard for nine months and, you know, felt like I deserved to be here. But, you know, I don't I don't like to overthink things and kind of just took it as, you know, that I got to keep working. I got to keep getting better. And, you know, I think I just went down to Syracuse with, you know, the right mindset and the right attitude of, you know, just go to work every day and try and get better, prove the coach is wrong. And, uh then uh, once I got called up, I kind of just didn't want to, you know, think too much about it and kind of just show them that, you know, I can be an everyday NHL guy and just, you know, whatever I need to do to whether it's help the team win or just help guys get better. Kind of just anything I can do really is the best way to put it. Ross, when do you find out if you're going to play or not? Because I know it's, you know, it seems like you're a mainstay in the lineup for now. Is it something where coaches like, hey, tomorrow you're going to go or in the morning skate, you're going to play today? Or do you just have the mindset that you're going to play every single day? Uh you know, me personally, I kind of like to have the mindset that I'm going to play every day because I don't like to, uh, you know, change too much. But uh, at the same time, uh, it's kind of just, you know, when I show up to the rink, then usually the lineup's posted on the board. And then uh, kind of just, you know, morning skate, you can kind of have a feel for, you know, what's going to be the plan for that night, I think. Ross, what is the worst non-call in hockey? Is it a slash? Is it a, a high stick to the face? I feel like in well, the last game, Stammer got the high stick to the face, and that feels like it's got to be the most brutal non-call there is. It, it, would you agree with that, or is there something else that bothers you? Uh, I would say probably high stick to the face, yeah, especially if, you know, you draw a little blood or, you know, it requires some sort of, you know, stitch or whatever you want to call it that I think that would have to be the worst because one, you know, there's no penalty and two, you're a little banged up. So I think that's, that's gotta be the worst. I don't think anything can top that really. Okay. All right. I wasn't sure if like a bad slashing <laughs> or something like that, but I thought the high stick to the face just yeah, no, million might be the definitely worst. High stick, definitely high stick. What's, what was it like in Syracuse? I believe I saw a stat that you're like the 62nd or 63rd player from Syracuse that has been in the lightning lineup. What's it like to be down there that it's, has such a, a rich tradition where you know that the majority of the guys in the lightning that have had success were there at some point? Yeah, I think they just have, you know, the coaching staff is, you know, unbelievable. And we have like great group of guys in Syracuse who all have the same goal of, you know, everyone was there to get better and everyone's pushing each other to, you know, be the best they can be. And, um, you know, I've said this before in interviews, like the uh, the head coach there, you know, Ben Gruel is, he's honestly something else. He, he pushed us, you know, so hard, and especially me, my, uh, my first year to like become a better player that I didn't know that I could honestly be. And, got the most out of me from, you know, practices, doing extra work, skating, all that different stuff. And, uh, you know, at times it was like, you know, 
I'd take a look in the mirror, like, is this is crazy how, you know, how tough he was on us. But, you know, now, like, when I take a step back and, you know, see all that I've gone through, I'm just so, so thankful for my time there. And, you know, I don't, I don't think I'd be here if I wasn't, uh, you know, there for two years getting better. So honestly, all the credit to the, uh, to the crunch. Are you, are you surprised? Have you surprised yourself with the success that you've had early on in your season and your career? Uh, yeah, you know, it's, I don't like to, you know, look too much into, you know, points or stats or, you know, any of that kind of stuff. M my goal is kind of just whatever I can do to help the team win is that's a positive for me. And, you know, right now, like the points, like if they can keep coming, that's awesome. But, you know, for me, as long as I'm playing like a good defensive game and, you know, not giving up goals, winning faceoffs, like that's kind of more uh, what I like to cater to. And then, you know, the points are just gravy on top. So, uh, hopefully they keep coming. You know, I, I, I wouldn't mind them, but uh, I just got to keep, you know, playing uh, in all three zones, I think. Ross, I saw you on Instagram yesterday, post Sunday fun day, and you're with Cal Foot, and he looked extremely bored. He was just soaking in the pool. <laughs> Please tell me that you guys, I was trying to imagine what was happening before or after the picture. Is that just what it was, a lazy day with you and Cal? Yeah, we were just, we were just hanging out, you know, laying by the pool. Got I think I got a little sunburn, honestly. I should have threw some, uh, should have threw some sunblock on the shoulders. They got a little burned up, but, uh, you know, you know, day off, kind of just want to relax, get a little, get a little sun and kind of not do too much. I know, I think, you know, guys maybe just want to spend time with their family and whatnot. So it was kind of nice to just to get away from the rink for a little bit and, you know, enjoy the time off. Ross, are there pictures of you with facial hair that exist anywhere? I searched, I Googled, <laughs> I went through anything, like, because we got to start thinking about playoff beard. What's, what's your situation? <laughs> so I, uh, I can grow a little facial hair. I just, I like the, uh, the clean shave look. And, you know, whenever I face, I FaceTime my mom, uh, big mama's boy. So I, whenever I give her a call, she always, honestly, that's like the first thing she says, she goes, shave your face. So, you know, I gotta, gotta listen to what she says. She says, I look better with the clean shave. So, uh, I like to, uh, I like to keep it, you know, high and tight or whatever the, uh, the terminology is, but now that you say that, maybe, maybe I'll have to grow it out a little bit, see how it looks. So are you like, so do you shave every day? It seems like just by assessing your face, which I've, I've done just for the sake of this interview, it seems like you're an every couple of day kind of guy. Uh, it's, I would say it's maybe like every three days or whatnot. Yeah. I, I like to, uh, I mean, I, I can't grow like what you have, but I can, I grow like a little bit of the, uh, the stubble there. And I don't know, it's just, I don't love the way it looks, but I, maybe if I gave it a couple of weeks and see how it looks, so maybe uh, in a couple of weeks, if you see me with a beard, I'll give a shout out to you. Yeah, please do. Listen, I'm, hi I'm hiding a lot, Ross, okay? And this is like the same with Pat Maroon when he grows his beard. You know, we have to hide this stuff. You got to let it flow. How often is your mom FaceTiming you? I, I would assume uh, it's what, every day? And you're like, mom, I I'm kind of at, at a job here. I got things to do. <laughs> yeah, she, you know, usually at nighttime, she likes to give me a call. And, you know, for the first five minutes, it's all that you got to get the dumb questions. No, nah, I guess not dumb, but, you know, the classic <laughs> The classic mom questions of, you know, How you she's, doing? Asking, she, she's asking me, like, you know, are the guys nice to you? And I'm like, yeah, mom, they are. Like, you know, <laughs> you got to remember, this is my job. So, you know, they're just the classic, you know, they're they're the classic mom questions and they're the best. But, uh, you know, she's she's just trying to check in. So, you know, got to take them for what they are. Ross, one last question. What was your welcome to the NHL moment, whether if it happened on the ice or off the ice? It, it sounds like getting on the private jet was a big moment for you. But was there anything happen that, you know, in the locker room or during a game where you go, oh, man, this is I'm in the NHL right now? Uh, yeah, the, the private jet here has got to be up there. But then I think the moment really hit me that I was like, wow, this is it was honestly when uh, the national anthem of my first game and kind of just taking it all in and you know, it was awesome that, you know, my mom and dad and my grandma and two couple of my buddies, my aunt, uh, you know, we're all there to experience that with me. And uh, I don't know, just for me, like, I honestly remember just taking a look around. And I was like, wow, like I've worked my whole life for this and kind of just wanted to embrace the moment and just roll with it. And then, you know, the ever since then, haven't, you know, kind of tried not take a step back. So it's been awesome. Well, listen, Ross, you're doing a great job, man. We're, all, we're happy to have you on the team. You have a lot of people that are rooting for you. I don't know how much time you're spending on social media. Hopefully, you're not too much, but people are really embracing you, and we can't wait to watch you grow with the team, man, and, and good luck down the road. you got a great personality, and thanks so much for doing the show today, man. I appreciate no, it. No, I, I honestly uh, really appreciate it. Thanks so much.